What's up you two? Today I'm going to be teaching you how to solve the square one. So the square one is a very fun puzzle, but it's also very challenging because you have to memorize so many algorithms. Also, if you mess up on an algorithm, you're back to square one. So before I actually teach you how to solve the square one, you need to know notation. And square root 1 notation is very different from 3x3 three three notation. If we were to do 3x3 three three notation on square root 1, this will be r, r prime, r2, l, l prime, l2, u, u prime, u2, d, d prime, d2. And there is no F and B because these layers are preventing us from doing those moves. And instead of using layers to turn the square one, we use numbers. And if we were to turn the top and bottom layer clockwise, we use positive numbers. And if we were to turn them counterclockwise, we use negative numbers. For example, on the top layer, for positive numbers, this will be 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This will be for negative numbers. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And negative 6 is just a plain 6. On the bottom layer, for clockwise moves and positive numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and for negative numbers, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and again, negative 6 is just basically a regular 6. There's also something called a slash, is when you just do a 180 degree turn for every two moves you do. For example, I do a, ne a 1, on the top and a negative 3 on the bottom and after I do those moves I do a slash at a 180 degree turn. And the method we're going to be using in this video is the Lars Vandenberg method. So how it goes is building a cube shape which is a square on the top and a square on the bottom. then orienting the corners, then orienting the edges, then permuting the corners, and then permuting the edges. and then doing the final moves. And you may end up with equator cases when the equator isn't solved. So with that being said, let's get this cube scrambled. Now that my square one is fully scrambled, we can move on to the first step, which is cube shape. Now this is the hardest step for a square one, but one easy tip for a cube shape is finding pairs of two like this one and connecting them. For example, I see this pair of two here and another one on the bottom. So what I can just do is just a slash. So I have a I have four edges connected. Now I can connect this one. I'm going to move it here. And I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to move right here so it can be connected. And do slash. I'm going to move it out of the way. But look. I have I don't have a two pair I don't have two edges connected and I'll get this case. And this case is very annoying. So what you can do is do a two zero like this and then kick out this two pair right here. 
and then replace it, this one, with this two pair. And here we have is this case, and this is your goal. Your goal is to get a U shape like this, and the algorithm for this goes like this. Slash, negative 2, negative 4, slash, negative 1, negative 2, slash, negative 3, negative 3, slash. And here we have a cube shape. Now that we're done with cube shape, we can move on to the second step, which is corner orientation. This is basically the easiest step for square one, and there's a lot of freedom into orienting the corners, so there's basically zero algorithms to follow. Also, you don't have to mess up the cube shape, because in this step, you only do moves like this. Just like that. So I'll be showing you three examples of corner orientation, starting off with the first example. I see there's a bar on the bottom right here, so I can just set, set, put it aside. And I can create a bar using these two. So I can do is do this, 1, 0, slash, and negative 3, 0, slash, and do another negative 3, 0, and slash. And here we have is the oriented corners. And edges don't really matter in this step. They only matter in the next step we're going to be doing after we orient the corners. So I'm going to be showing you two more examples. Okay, for this example, I see one unoriented corner. And this one needs to go here. And this one needs to go there. So what I can do is just do a negative 3 and a negative 1 slash and then I do a 0, 3 and a slash. And here we have are the oriented corners. Let me show you one more example. Okay, this is a very easy one. I see a bar, a bar, a bar, and another bar. And all I just have to do is just do a 0, 2, and do a slash. That's it. That's it for corner orientation. And basically what you have to do is just mess up with the, the corners until they are fully oriented. Now that we're done with orienting the corners, we can move on to the third step which is orienting the edges. So here you have is an easy case. You just need to orient these two misoriented edges with these two. So all you have to do is just align the pieces so that they're like this. And then do this algorithm. 1, 0, slash, negative 1, negative 1, slash. And here we have are the oriented edges in the right spot. Now you might get cases like this. We have four edges unoriented on both uh, sides. Now this is a very easy case and it's one of the most rarest cases you'll get for edge orientation. And, and the only thing you need to do is just do the previous algorithm which I showed you. Then you're going to align these misoriented edges and then do the algorithm one more time and then we have the oriented edges however in edge orientation you might get cases like this or cases like this so all you need to do is find a misoriented edge and place it right here in the top then find another one in the bottom layer and then place one right there and the algorithm you need to do goes like this 1 0 slash 3 0 slash 
three zero slash negative net one negative one slash negative two negative one slash negative three zero slash and here we have are the or, or the misoriented edges in the right place. Now do that for the last two ones. And do that album one more time. And then you're done. So all you just have to do is repeat the algorithm and uh, until you get all the edges in the right place. Now that we're done with edge orientation, you can move on to the fourth step, which is corner permutation. So in this case, in the bottom layer, we have all the corners permuted, as you can see here. But on the top layer, not all the corners are permuted. So the white, orange, green corner needs to go here, and the white, green, red corner needs to go there. So what we'll do is that we'll put these headlights in the back, and then we'll perform this algorithm. Slash 3, negative 3, slash negative 3, 0, slash 0, 3, slash 0, negative 3, slash, 0, 3, slash. And here we have all our D corners permuted on both layers. But what if you get a case in corner permutation when these two uh, corners need to switch? All you have to do is just do the algorithm I showed you. Then you put the headlights in the back, and then do the algorithm one more time. And here we have our the permuted corners. Now what if you have to permute your corners on the other side, but your equator is like this? And if you perform an algorithm when the equator is like this, it'll feel really awkward. So what you need to do is flip the whole cube, and then do this algorithm, slash, six, six, slash. And as you can see, the yellow is on top, and the white is on the bottom. And I can just permute the corners. Now that we're done with corner permutation, we can move on to the second to last step, which is edge permutation. And for this step, you need to have the equator flipped. And to flip the equator, do this algorithm. Slash, six, zero, slash, six, zero, slash, six, zero. And as you can see, the equator is flipped. And basically for edge permutation, you need to have all four edges solved, or two unsolved, which I'll talk about that later. So in this case, I have three edges unsolved. It's a pretty easy case. So I look at the very right, and uh, and look at the edge, and if it needs to go into the front, I'll just keep it like that, but if it needs to go into the back, I'll have to do a 1-0, but for this case, I don't have to do a 1-0, because it needs to go into the front. So for this case, I do this algorithm, slash, 0, negative 3, slash, 0, 3, slash, 0, negative 3, slash, 0, 3, slash. And even though I messed up everything, you can just do a 1, 0, and then do the algorithm. And as you can see, the edges have been permuted. Now, if you have an edge that needs to go into the back, we'll start off with the 1, 0, and then do the algorithm. But then we won't have to do another one zero, and then we'll just do the algorithm. And as you can see, everything's permuted. Now if you get a case like this, when you get like an H perm, all I just need to do is do the algorithm. Then do a one zero, do the algorithm. Now here, this needs to go to the front, 
So we just do the algorithm. Then do a one zero to the algorithm. And everything's permuted. Now when you get a case like this, like a Z perm, just do the algorithm. Then do a one zero just do the algorithm. And as you can see this edge needs to go into the back. So start with the one zero, do the algorithm. Now do a negative one zero, do the algorithm. And everything's permuted. Now you can get something called parity in square one, which you may have heard from a four by four when the uh, it doesn't occur on a three by three. So in this case, this piece needs to go there, this piece needs to go there, this piece needs to go there, and this piece needs to come here. So all I need to do is figure out a piece that needs to go in the right spot. So this piece needs to go here, so I'll put this in the back. And see, it needs to go in the back. So I'll just start with a 1, 0, then do the algorithm. Then I'll do a negative 1, 0, do the algorithm. And as you can see, I've ended up with a parity. These two are opposite. You may also get a different kind of parity on square 1, when this piece needs to go there, this piece needs to go there, this piece needs to go there, and this piece needs to go here. So figure out a piece which needs to go in the right spot, so this one needs to go here. And just like what I taught you before, we just do the algorithm. Then we do a 1, 0, do the algorithm. And now we end up with two edges unsolved. Once you narrow down the previous two cases to two unsolved edges, you might get a case like this, when two adjacent edges need to be solved, or a case like this, when two opposite edges need to be solved, which I'll teach you later in this video. So in, these, in this case, these two edges need to be solved. And to do that, you need to learn one algorithm. And it's the longest algorithm you, you need to learn for square one. And it flips the equator, and it's just a pain to ask to learn. And it's very easy to mess up on. So the algorithm goes like this. I'll be going very slowly. Slash, negative three, zero. Slash, zero, three slash zero negative three slash zero three slash two zero slash zero two slash negative two zero slash four zero slash zero negative two slash zero two slash negative 1, 4, slash, 0, negative 3, slash. And as you can see, these two edges have been solved, and the equator has been flipped. Now when you get two edges that are opposite and need to be switched, all you just have to do is just do the previous algorithm. Then do a 1, 0, do the previous algorithm which I showed you earlier. And then you get a parity, then just do the parity algorithm. After you permute all your edges, you might get cases when the equator isn't fully solved. So you might get a case like this, when the equator needs to be flipped. Or a case like this, when the equator isn't properly solved. Or you got get, you'll get a case like this, when the equator isn't properly solved and is flipped. So starting off with the first case I showed you. The algorithm you need to do for this goes like this. 
I showed you this album earlier during Edge Permutation. Slash six zero slash six zero slash six zero. And as you can see the equator is solved. Now this the second case which I showed you, when it isn't properly solved, the album goes like this. One zero slash six six slash negative one zero. And as you can see the equator is solved. Now this is the third case you might get when it's not properly solved and the equator is flipped. So all you just need to do is the first algorithm. Then do the second algorithm. And now it is solved. So that is it for my tutorial on how to solve the square one. Hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.